we are dealing with a heat transfer problem and we have a flat plate right here that contains several modules in it. It has a width of one meters. Each module has a length of 50 millimeters and the plate with the modules, everything nicely have the same thickness and that thickness is 10 millimeters. Now the uh, top, the surface of this plate with the modules is maintained at 150 degrees Celsius. This is a uniform surface temperature. We also know that we have air blowing over it. This air is at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and has a velocity of 30 meters per second. Now they want us to find two things. First, they want us to find the power generation, what per volume that is required in a module that is 700 millimeters from the leading edge of the plate, right here. I'm going to consider this one. So what would be the power generation needed in this plate in order to keep this surface temperature nice and constant? They also want us to find uh, the location and the maximum temperature inside uh, this module. So let's uh, take a look at this. What does this mean? So maybe if we look at the units, it can help us understand better what are we talking about. Like we have the regular Q, right? And the unit is just watts, W. That, that's it, just that. Then we have the heat rate per unit length. And this one is the watts per unit length, which is a meter, right? So watts per meter. Now we have heat rate per unit area or what we much more like to use we call it flux this is our flux which is what per meter squared now what they are asking us here is this one the next one which is volumetric uh, power generation which is what per meter cubed so this is what we're going for in this problem in another way, uh, maybe we can think of it this way, we are not interested in just what kind of heat is passing through this top area, what kind of flux we have here. We, have, we are interested in the uh, power generation that's being generated in this entire module. So not just the top, but every single layer of molecules gen is generating, right? Not just the top, all of them are generating, all the way till we get to... 10 millimeters, the whole length of it, or depth. Maybe this helps to get the idea better, what are we looking for here. Now, to get started with the problem, we're going to take our module, and we're going to write up a control surface on the top surface of it, right here. Just the top surface. That's going to be our control surface. Now we're going to go ahead and write up our energy balance on this control surface right here we have energy in minus energy out energy generated minus energy consumed and this is the delta d over dt of energy stored now let's see what can we cancel out of here are we storing any kind of energy in the module no so this one we can mark as zero uh, do we have any external energy going into the module from somewhere else? No, this is zero. Do we have any energy consumed? Like, is it consuming energy from somewhere else or the whatever it's generated inside it? Is it using it for something else? We don't have anything like that. Consumed is zero. So, do we have energy generated? Yes, that's pretty much exactly what we're going to be looking for. The energy generation and energy out yes we have energy loss at the top where we're gonna have convection right this air is coming over the top and removing some of that heat so we have these two we can't cross those ones out so after simplification here it is energy out equals energy generated now this equation if we look at it 
the units on both sides, we have watts, right? Now we want to get to this kind of units, so therefore we're going to divide the whole equation by the volume, meter squared, meter cubed. This way we get this equation where we have the energy out is convection, right? So we're going to mark that one and we have our energy generated with the correct units. This is volumetric generation right here and this would be kind of weird. We don't have any kind of formulas to calculate this, so we need to do a little more work on this. So I'm going to multiply this equation by another length and length is what a meter right so on this side from the units we're gonna cancel them out and that's gonna lead us to watts per meter squared which is our flux right and flux of convection we have formulas for that that'll help us out real nicely and here what we're gonna have what we are looking for times a length that's it this is gonna be our formula that we're gonna have to use to help find our needed value so i went ahead and plugged in our flux for convection formula h times ts minus t infinite equals what we need the generation and times length now this length let's think about it which one is this are we dealing with this the width or thickness now we left flux here right and flux is dependent on area and we're gonna be working with the top area of the module so we left that those two lengths in the meter squared the third length which we cancelled out here but we left here this is the thickness this one so which is a equals 10 millimeters so we could this length we could also write as an a now i went ahead i solved for our uh, volumetric volumetric power generation right here equals h times ts minus t infinite divided by a now in this formula do we have everything we need so we can calculate what uh, we are looking for uh h well right off the bat we don't have h so we're gonna have to find that one the surface temperature we know the air air temperature we know and a the thickness we know all right so all we have to find is h and we can get what we need so we need to find our convection uh, heat transfer coefficient the h right so when we look at formulas, we have two choices, local or average formulas. So for, if I use the local formula, then that would give me on this uh, module, like for example, this dot. At this exact dot, what is the H? And that what doesn't really help me because I kind of want it for the whole module, right? Now, the other one, the average formulas, those represent average over the entire plate beginning from the leading edge of the plate all the way to the point where i'm interested in where it ends basically or where i'm looking at but that would be over the whole thing and that doesn't help me either because i want it over this part not the whole thing to the front so here to find what we need we're gonna kind of estimate of what's happening over this module I'm going to show you two different methods how to find this average uh, h that we are looking for. Don't get confused. We're not talking about the average over the whole thing, just the average over this module, right? So, two methods to find this one. I think I know of another one, but I'm not going to go that into it. Two is just fine. Hopefully, you guys can get at least those two. Now, we got to the point where we need to select our formulas. And as we know, in heat transfer, we have quite a few of them, right? There is a lot of formulas. So let's think, what kind of formulas are we going to be relying on in this particular case? So we know we have a heat transfer problem, right? That, that's correct. So in heat transfer, we have conduction, convection, radiation. We don't have radiation, we don't have conduction. 
we have convection. Is this an external or internal throw? We are not in a pipe or duct or anything, so we cross that out. It's external flow. We are dealing with a flat plate, so not a blunt body. Constant surface temperature, constant flux. We are working with a constant temperature, which is at 150 degrees Celsius, right? We are not dealing with constant flux. Now here, are we more in a laminar or in a turbulent setup? This one, actually, we still don't know. We need to find out. And we're going to do that by determining our Reynolds number. And that's going to tell us, are we going to be using laminar or turbulent formulas? So for the first uh, approach to find our average uh, heat transfer coefficient over the module itself, I'm going to find a Reynolds number at the beginning of the module another one at the end. I'm going to use formulas to find a heat transfer coefficient for the beginning, one for the end, and then I'm going to average those two. And then I'm going to show you the second method after that. Okay, so the beginning of the module, we know that it is 700 millimeters from the leading edge, which is further that way, right? Now, the module itself is 50 millimeters, so the end of it will be at 750 millimeters. Here's my first Reynolds number, which I found using this formula. U, the velocity we know, L, the length we know. For the first one is our 700 millimeters, right here. For the second one is 750 millimeters. And down here, the kinematic viscosity. This one we simply find it from property tables. Now, I found my first Reynolds number right here, 9.5, 10 to the fifth. And the second one at the end of the module, 10.2 times 10 to the fifth. Now, my critical Reynolds number is 5 times 10 to the fifth. Both of these are larger, therefore we have turbulent conditions over the entire uh, module. From beginning to end, we are in turbulent conditions. Now this helps us determine the correct correlation that we can use from our uh, tables or formulas. And this is what we're going to be using. And this will help us find our H. We're going to use only this and this side of it. I went ahead, I plugged everything in. First I solve for H, of course. From here, we solve for H, plug everything in, and here's my two H values. Then I'm going to go ahead to find my average over the module. There you go, add it up, divide by 2, bam, 69.7 watts per meter square Kelvin. Now for the second method, which we could have used to find our average, instead of doing what we did, we could find an average length. So 700 plus the 50 divided by 2, which is 725. So we're going to find our Reynolds number at this average length in the middle of the module, and we're going to find our H based on that right here in the middle. Pause the video and look it over. This is the calculation for it. And you can see we ended up with the exact same H value. Okay, now we can come back to our formula right here. We found our H. Now we know everything. And finally, we can find our Q dot, our required power generation or volumetric power generation. I'm going to go ahead and plug everything we know into the formula. There it is. Here is our value of watts per meter cubed, exactly what we've been looking for. If you want, you can round it up to three sig figs. And there it is, 871 times 10 to the third watts per meter cubed. Now, let's focus on the second question. Now, for the second question, we need to find the maximum temperature inside the module. Now for this one, we're gonna let's come back to this little cross out that we did over here. And remember, for the first question, we ended up in convection 
formulas, but here we will be looking at not convection, but actually conduction formulas. So, we can use this formula right here to find our desired value for the maximum temperature. And where does this come from? Right here. This is conduction through a plane wall. If we have heat generation inside the wall, this is how the temperature profile looks towards the two sides of the wall, right? In the middle, we have the highest temperature, which we will call T0, and it drops gradually as it goes towards the two surfaces. Now, in the middle line, there's no heat transfer from one side to the other one. Therefore, we can go and cover this side and treat it as an adiabatic surface right here. That's why I marked it. And another adiabatic surface is insulation, right? Also, it does not allow heat to transfer. So, therefore, this will be our case where this formula is derived. You can find the derivation in the textbooks. If you want to look it up, that's where it comes from. You make a, a control surface on the face of the wall and you're going to use conduction and heat generation and you're going to end up deducting this formula right here this is what we're working here it's just not a plain wall like this it's like this we have insulation on all sides right and the ts up here at the top of it that's what we have on top yeah ts Now, if we look at our formula, we know everything, so we can go ahead and plug it in. The Q dot, we just calculated it right there. Our length, be careful, don't confuse it. We are working with the thickness here of the module, which is the 10 millimeter one, okay? To the square, two times K, and now the K of the module, not the air that we used in the previous calculation, K of the module, and this was given in the problem, so there's no need to look it up anywhere else. Everything plugged in. There you go. We know TS, the surface, 150, and we can arrive to our T max of 158 degrees Celsius. And this is right here at the bottom of it, right? Right there, where at the insulation meets the bottom of the module. And as we come up gradually towards the surface, looks like it drops actually about 8 degrees Celsius. The surface is at 150, the bottom of the module 158, 8 degree drop.